and welcome to Campus 2 Community, the Columbia Basin College news magazine, to keep you informed of what's happening at CBC and how we might better serve you. Are you out of a job? Out of unemployment benefits? Out of luck? Well, the worker retraining program at Columbia Basin College could be just what you need. We'll be talking with Director Deborah Brown later on the show. But first, we're going to talk about the Columbia Basin College uh, High School Academy where dropout students come back to school and get their high school diplomas. We'll be speaking with one of the students, Edgar Garcia, and a special project that they've got going in the high school academy. But first, we're going to talk with one of the instructors, Jerry Homble. And Jerry, welcome to our show. Well, thank you, Frank. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, before we get started, uh, um, uh, tell us a, a little bit, for those who aren't aware, what is the high school academy and what does it do? Well, high school academy was a brainchild of... Uh, a couple of college administrators and uh, local school administrators and people out in the community to catch students who had fallen through the cracks, who had dropped out of school, giving them opportunity to get back and get their diploma, not the GED. And so we offer these students this opportunity and we put them on a fast track and hopefully we get them through and then they transition right into CBC when they're done. So where do they come from? Are they, are they all local, the local school districts areas? They're all the local school districts. We have Kennewick, Richland, Pasco, and Columbia Burbank who are all involved. Now, um, what kind of environment does the high school academy provide for these students? We're small. Uh, we provide the students with a little bit more one-on-one -on -one attention and, and uh, identify the personal needs, really get to know the kids, um, meet what's necessary for them to, to get done. Um, we're available to them uh, all day, a good portion of the day, um, and they have ready access to us. Mm -hmm. um, now you've got a project going which you had last year called the Moon Buggy Project. What's that all about? Well, 20 years ago, NASA, in an attempt to get students interested in the STEM education program, came up with the idea that uh, they would have a, what they call the Great Moon Buggy Race. And the idea is that Students put together a, a moon buggy that is people powered by a, a male and a female student and they have to put this thing together so that it folds up into a four by four by four foot crate because that's the size that they had to ship the original moon buggy to the moon, the, the original Apollo that went up there that, uh, with the moon buggy. And so these students put this together, it uh, makes them think outside the box and then there's teams from all over the world. Uh, we happen to be the first team last year that uh, from high school or college from the Pacific Northwest to enter it. There were 140 schools. Wow. And uh, our students placed 26th. Fantastic. So what impact overall does it have on your students? It really makes them begin to think about their future, what's available to them. Uh, a lot of our students, and I, I refer to them all the time as our square pegs that don't fit in the round holes. Uh, they haven't found success elsewhere, but they're finding success with this. There's a lot of hands-on, uh, as I said, thinking outside the box, put some in touch with science and, and technology, engineering, mathematics, they have to use all that. And it's extremely successful. Uh, last year when we were at um, Huntsville, where the race is, uh, the first two hours we were there, um, our students were approached by engineer professors from six different universities to tell them what's available for them there because there were certain aspects about our moon buggy that just really they thought were just outstanding. Fantastic. We wish you luck again this year and great job with the students at the High School Academy. Thank you very much. And we'll be right back to talk to one of those students after this. Looking for a career where you are needed, can travel, and earn an excellent wage? In the next three to five years, more than 40% of the nuclear energy workforce will be eligible to retire. Columbia Basin College's Nuclear Technology Program provides training to become radiation protection technicians, plant operators, and instrument and control technicians. Here's your chance to become part of the nuclear workforce. Train today to power up your career.
Welcome back. So what's it like to drop out of high school and then come back into high school? Well, we have a student with us who's part of the High School Academy at Columbia Basin College right now, and that is Edgar Garcia. Edgar, welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell us a little bit uh, your story about how you ended up going to the High School Academy. Well, like the rest of the students in High School Academy, I dropped out of high school because I had to get a job and pay bills and whatnot. I was then working in the fields and at a grocery store for about a year or so. Then I realized that education was way more important than I thought. So I decided to go back to school and High School Academy was the program that was out there. So I decided to give it a try. Fantastic. So where do you hope uh, the High School Academy, getting your high school diploma, will lead you? My high school, high school Academy would lead me to getting my high school diploma and my high school diploma would lead me to going to CBC for two years to obtain my AA, then transfer to a four-year university, hopefully WSU Pullman or any other university that would take me and get my master's degree on mechanical engineering. Wow, that's quite a goal. Yeah. Good luck with that. Now, this moon buggy thing, where does that uh, come from? And you're in your, your second year, so you were on the project last year. What's that all about? Well, it's about a, it's a mechanical engineering program uh, you get to work on a specific boogie. We all, we're all assigned to uh, one individual part of the boogie. It's, it's a huge part of teamwork. Uh, we, we all have to make a big, like a 4x4 moon boogie. It has to fit in a 4x4 box. And yeah, we have to make it really strong, fast, and uh, really light that way we can win this moon boogie race mm -hmm. so uh, it's a team project right about how many students are on it and uh, you mentioned everybody has a different job yeah it's about we now have about 15 15 members in the moon boogie team we all have a different we all, we all have different jobs like some of them work on steering some of them want differentials some want suspension it all has to work out though wow yeah, yeah extraordinary stuff so how has your attitude uh, changed uh, toward education since joining the high school academy? Actually, before high school academy, I didn't know if I had what it takes to graduate or to be studying at a college level. There's actually really great teachers in high school academy that love their job. They know how to teach us, and they would go out their way to teach us properly. Uh, I now have full confidence in myself, and I can get anywhere in education. I'm dedicated to this and I'm really looking forward for college. Well we know you've got what it takes. You've shown that already and we mm -hmm. wish you the best of luck and we're quite proud of you at Columbia Basin College. Thank you Edgar. Thank you. Well for those of you that are looking for work right now we might have an answer for you for our worker retraining program coming up right after this. Where can you see stunning views of stars, galaxies, and other wonders of the universe? Visit the Bechtel National Planetarium at Columbia Basin College. Take a guided tour of the night sky under a spectacular dome in the Community Enrichment Foundation Theater where you can learn about phases of the moon, planets, constellations, and other fascinating objects in deep space. Science and educational films for a variety of age groups are also displayed on the planetarium dome. Look up into the night sky. Learn more about our universe. And welcome back. Well, the recession seems to be receding for the most part, but not for some people, as some people still having trouble finding work. And with us now is the director of the Columbia Basin College Worker Retraining Program, Deborah Brown. Deb, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me here. First of all, before we get started in what people can do, tell us a little bit about what worker retraining does. Worker retraining is a grant funded position or program that helps folks go back to school pays the first quarter of tuition. We also have a book loan program. So basically we provide the funding that allows them to get started in school. So when the most recent recession was at its peak, what kinds of workers were you seeing coming to you? Well, we saw actually a lot of folks from the area coming to us, um, radiation uh, technicians, um, engineers, clerical support staff. Um, 
So how can worker retraining help people that maybe have been stay-at-home parents mm -hmm. and have not really had a career in the past? Well, that, that portion of our eligibility is for people that have been supported by a family member and is no longer supported by that member. So it can be somebody that has um, separated, divorced. It can also be that one of the uh, supporting members is now on unemployment and so they're not providing the support for the family and the other member hasn't worked outside the home. So we can help those folks as well to start in the program and provide the funding while they're working out their financial aid package. Okay, so now what are the qualifications and what are the benefits for going into the worker retraining program? Well, there are many benefits, least of which is the funding, which is a great benefit. So we do pay the first quarter of tuition and, and we have a book loan program that pretty much almost every quarter can help the students. And so that saves them a great deal of money not having to buy the books. Um, people that qualify are people that are on Washington State unemployment, people that have exhausted unemployment within the last two years. Then we have the displaced homemaker who again, so like I said, has here. not worked outside um, the home and is now in need of retraining from, or training so that they can become employed classes? and support their family. Uh, morning classes um, work for me. We also okay. have an expanded so eligibility to our program and that's for people um, that are working and potentially their job is in jeopardy because they need to gain some more skills. So we can, we can help those folks as well. So how would potential worker training students find out uh, more information about the program? They can call our office, but we have a really, um, really nice funding tool on the website. So if you go to CBC's main website and type in worker retraining, there's a, a link you can follow called Do I Qualify? It asks a series of questions and it will um, tell you, based on all of our eligibilities, whether we can provide services. Okay, so anybody in our local area is eligible to uh, apply? Absolutely. They can go through in the funding tool and it will direct them if they qualify for our program. So if they do qualify, we do academic advising, we do registration, we make academic plans that lay out what they'll need for the whole time that they're at CBC. If they're on unemployment, we help them with training benefits and commission approved training applications. We help them navigate the employment security system of going to school and collecting unemployment. Very good. Thank you so much for being with us. We hope you have a lot more people to help. Thanks for having me here. And thank you for being with us as well. And to find out more information on these programs or anything else, you can check out our website at columbiabasin.edu or call us at 547-0511.